two-dimensional Minkowski space-time. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, the topic of my talk is about Lorentzian geometry, and let me briefly explain the viewpoint. In our everyday life, we usually speak of something like this. An event can influence another event. When this happens, we say that two points or two events are causally related. This is the so-called Cosan effect. And this can be mathematically precisely defined, and it turns out that it has a very close relation to geometric, in geometric information of given Lorentzian manifold. In this research area, there was famous long-resting open problem. And in my talk, I want to show the answer to the problem, and I will explain some basic ideas and tools for solving that problem. If Riemannian manifold is a manifold with Euclidean space as its tangent space, then Lorentzian manifold is a manifold with Minkowski space as its tangent space. So, so to study a Minkowski space has a sufficient meaning in Lorentzian geometry. Let me first classify the tangent vectors in Minkowski space. Here we use the metric with one minus sign and the remaining ones are positive. As you know, in Minkowski space there is a so-called time cones. It is defined by these equations. And it is easy to see that it has two connected components. We choose one of them to be future directed and the others to be past directed. We classify the tangent vectors in Minkowski space as this. The vectors inside the future, inside the future time cone is called the future directed time-like vectors and the vectors on the boundary of this time cone is called null, future directed null vectors. The time-like vectors can be defined by this one and null vectors can be defined by this. The vectors outside the time cone is called the space-like vectors and we are not mainly interested in those vectors because it lies in the Riemannian geometry. We say that a tangent vector is called is causal if it is time-like or null. Physically, the time-like vectors can be interpreted as that an information at this point can be sent to the final point of the vector by use of non-zero rest mass particles. And future-directed null vectors can be interpreted that an information at the origin can be sent to the final point of the given null vectors. We can extend the causal relation in Minkowski space to an arbitrary curved Lorentzian manifold. We denote by this, we denote by this if there exists a differentiable curve such that its tangent vector is always future directed and time like. This is the example of the time like curve. And we denote by this if there exists a piecewise differentiable curve such that its tangent vector is always future directed and causal. If there exists a point X that satisfies this, this implies that uh, there exists a future directed time like curve from X to X. So this implies the existence of so called time machine. So many of theoretical physicists want to discard this case. Also, Lorentzian geometer want to discard this case because there happens some topological defects. We need a one definition. We say that a Lorentzian manifold is strongly causal if there exists no almost closed causal curve. It turns out that when the manifold is strongly causal, then we can define a new topology by use of this causal relation. And it turns out that the topology defined by this causal relation coincides with the given manifold topology. Almost closed curve is uh, we have a future directed 
causal curve with the uh, and the initial point and the final point can be arbitrarily closed. We can make such an example. For example, we this is a subset of uh, Minkowski space, and we identify these two sides. And this is the time cone. This is the future directive. Then at this point, we can make a curve like this. We in this space, we delete this line. Then we can make an almost closed curve like this. When this happens, we say that uh, by a slight modification of a metric, we can make this to be an actual closed timeline curve. Here, M and N are two Lorentzian manifold. And if there exists a bijection between these two manifolds such that the map, if the map preserves the causal relation, then F is called a causal isomorphism. In 1976, the famous uh, theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking has published this result. If the manifold is strongly causal and if there exists a causal isomorphism, then this function, causal isomorphism, becomes a conformal diffeomorphism if the dimension is bigger than two. Please note that in this definition of causal isomorphism, we have not assumed F even to be continuous. But if it preserves a causal relation, it becomes a conformal diffeomorphism. In this sense, causal relation encodes a topological structure, differentiable structure, and conformal structure of the given Lorentzian manifold. The long-lasting open problem, which I have mentioned, is very simple. To, so I think even middle school students will understand the problem. In 1964, a uh, French mathematician, Gimon, has published a very famous paper. The title is this, Causality Implies the Lorentz Group. He has proved that if F is a causal automorphism, automorphism means the causal isomorphism with the domain and co-domain are the same. If F is a causal automorphism on Minkowski space with a dimension bigger than or equal to three, then F is given by this form. Here, small a is a positive real number and capital A is a orthochronous matrix. Orthochronous matrix is a counterpart to orthogonal matrix in Euclidean space and chronos means that this matrix must sense the future directed time like curve to future directed time like vectors to future directed time like vectors. It must not reverse the time orientations. His paper, the number of uh, citations of his paper is over 300 times. So this is very famous in Laurentian geometric community. But as he as he commented, his theorem does not hold in two-dimensional Minkowski space. That is the open problem. The general, what is the general form of causal automorphism on Minkowski two space? In this theorem, it is not difficult to see the group structure, the structure of the group of all causal automorphism on Minkowski space. <coughs> it, is, uh, it has the structure isomorphic to semi-direct product. Neither is no, uh, in 2009, I have proved that if we consider the group of all homeomorphism on the real line, then this group is a subgroup of the group of all causal automorphism on two-dimensional Minkowski space. As can be seen in Zeeman's theorem, if we consider the group of all causal automorphism on high-dimensional Minkowski space, then it is of finite-dimensional but 
the causal automorphism group on Minkowski 2 space is infinite dimensional. So at least in causal theoretic viewpoint, Minkowski 2 space has much more symmetry than high dimensional Minkowski space. I think it is very interesting because high dimensional Minkowski space can be foliated by uh, two dimensional Minkowski space. One of the difficulty of the open problem is this. This is a uh, two-dimensional Minkowski space and we choose two points P and Q because the point Q lies in the future of P, these two points are causally related and we denote it by this. If there is a causal automorphism between these two space, then because F is a causal automorphism, FQ must lie in the future of F of P. In high dimensional case, if we connect these two points by time like straight line, then it, it must be sent to the straight line by the Zeeman's theorem. But in two dimensional Minkowski space, the a straight line, time like straight, straight line, need not to be sent to a straight line. It can be a closed curved time like curve. This is one of the main reasons. The why the two-dimensional two case is more difficult. Let me, this is the answer to the open problem. Uh, for any given causal automorphism on Minkowski 2 space, we can find a continuous function on the real line and one homeomorphism on the real line that satisfy these three conditions such that if the homeomorphism F is increasing, then the causal automorphism has this form. And if F is, if the homeomorphism is decreasing, then the causal automorphism have this form. Conversely, for any given continuous function and any homeomorphism on the real line that satisfy these three conditions, the function defined in this way becomes a causal automorphism on Minkowski 2 space. At first glance, this seems to be somewhat complicated, but by slight modification, we can make this answer too simple. For any causal automorphism on the Minkowski space, we can find the two homeomorphism on the real line by setting that phi to be f plus g and psi f minus g. Then, these two conditions implies that phi and psi are surjective and this condition guarantees that phi and psi are injective. Then by use of topological domain of invariance, we can see that phi and psi are homeomorphism. Uh, and because F is a homeomorphism on the real line, phi and psi must be both increasing or both decreasing. Finally, so for any given causal automorphism, we can find the two homeomorphism which are both increasing or both decreasing such that if the homeomorphisms are increasing, the automorphism is given by this. And if the homeomorphism is decreasing, the causal automorphism is given by this. Conversely, for any two homeomorphism on the real line, the function defined in this way becomes a causal automorphism on Minkowski 2 space. We can also consider the group structure of causal automorphism on Minkowski 2 space. We have seen that for any causal automorphism, we can find the two homeomorphisms which are both increasing or both decreasing. So there exists a one to one correspondence between the causal automorphism group and the set, which has an element of both increasing or both decreasing homeomorphisms. This set H has a natural group structure the, with respect to the operation induced from this product group. 
However, with this operation, this group is not homeomorphic, uh, isom is not isomorphic. So we need to define a new operation on this set. To analyze the group operation, we need a simple Z2 action on the set H. And if we define the up group operation in this way, then the set H with this group operation is isomorphic to the causal automorphism group on Minkowski 2 space. This is a G2 action defined here, and this is a group operation induced from this product group. I think in this result, uh, I think it is very interesting that any two dimension, any causal automorphism, each component of causal automorphism satisfies the wave equations. In high dimensional case, because the solution is a finely linear, it gives a, in a sense, it gives a trivial solution of wave equations. But in two dimensional case, the solution gives a non trivial solution of wave equations. Let me explain the key ideas for solving this problem. We say that a Lorentzian manifold is globally hyperbolic. Ah, I'm sorry. We say that a, hyper, a hypersurface sigma is called a Cauchy surface if every inextendable timeline curve meets sigma exactly once. Then we say that if a manifold has a Cauchy surface, then the manifold is called globally hyperbolic. This is a Minkowski space and it is very easy to see that this hyperplane defined by the time coordinate constant is a Cauchy surface. So Minkowski space is a globally hyperbolic with non-compact Cauchy surfaces. Global hyperbolicity has a close relation to hyperbolic partial differential equations. Under some mild conditions, it turns out that uh, hyperbolic partial differential equations is well posed if the underlying manifold is globally hyperbolic. Also, global hyperbolicity is a counterpart to completeness in Riemannian geometry. In Riemannian geometry, there is a famous theorem, the Hoff and Reno theorem, that states that in Riemannian geometry, geodesic completeness and metric completeness are equivalent. But in Lorentzian geometry, because the metric is not positive definite, we cannot say anything about metric completeness. Also, in Lorentzian geometry, because there exist three kinds of geodesics, time-like geodesic, null geodesic, and space-like geodesic. So the geodesic behavior in Lorentzian geometry is much more difficult than in Riemannian geometry. Hoff Reno theorem shows that if the Riemannian manifold is complete, that any two points can be joined by a minimal geodesics. The sense that M, the sense that global hyperbolicity is a counterpart to Riemannian completeness is this one. It is known that if M is globally hyperbolic, and if the two points are causally related, then these two point two points can be joined by a maximal geodesic. In this sense, global hyperbolicity is a counterpart to Riemannian completeness. To solve that problem, uh, I have developed uh, new tools in Lorentzian geometry uh, that can be summarized in this sentence. Causal relation of Lorentzian manifold can be completely encoded into its Cauchy surface if the Cauchy surface is non-compact. This implies that topological, differentiable, and metric structure of M can be encoded into its Cauchy surface. So, if the Cauchy surface is non-compact, we only need to see the specific class of a compact and connected subset of the Cauchy surface. <coughs> this is the uh, key idea. Here we have two points P and Q, and Q lies in the future of P. 
if we take the intersection of the past of this point P with the cosy surface, then we have the intersection, this graded subset. We can show that this is compact and connected. Also, if we take the intersection of the past of this point with the cosy surface, then we get uh, this bigger compact and connected subset. It is almost trivial that if Q lies in the future of P, then SP is a subset of SQ. The question is uh, whether the converse also holds. And what I have shown that if sigma is non-compact, the converse statement of this also holds. So we can represent this point by uh, this compact and connected subset. And furthermore, we can replace this causal relation by a simple relation of inclusion between compact and connected subset of a given Cauchy surface. So the problem becomes very easy. This is the final characteristic properties of Minkowski two space. In the category of causal space, uh, you know, to embed a space into a larger space with a certain structure preserved is a very important problem in many branches of mathematics. I have shown that any two-dimensional globally hyperbolic Lorentzian manifold can be causally isomorphically embedded into two-dimensional Minkowski space if the manifold M has a non-compact Cauchy surfaces. So in the category of causal space, the Minkowski two space plays a role of co-universal object. Trivially, this property does not hold in high dimensional Minkowski space. Let me finish. Thank you.